excited that you're here. And today we're talking about mold. Mold is more of a big deal than you realize. And if you're one of those people out there who are maybe saying there's no such thing as mold illness, guess what? This episode is not for you. But for those of you who are suffering from a lot of weird symptoms, maybe symptoms you can't figure out, this is a possibility that you should consider. Toxic mold and mold related illness is more common than you think. And when I was only practicing conventional medicine, I thought anyone who talked about mold was absolutely crazy. But it turns out that I was devastatingly wrong. Mold exposure can cause so many health issues that are just dismissed. It can cause hormonal imbalances, brain fog, headaches, asthma, fatigue, insomnia, hair loss, autoimmunity issues, balance issues, weird sensations. I'm going to go into it more. And it all starts with just feeling like something is off. So today we're going to explore mold illness, what it is, how do you know if you have it? And of course, what can you do about it? Why am I losing my voice already? I don't know. As always, I want to let you know how to reach me and my team. If you're watching us on Facebook, drop the word live or uh, let us know that you're here or replay if you're watching us on replay. Wherever you are, type the word change and that will let us know that you want the show notes. And if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. It's free. Don't be stingy. Just give us a like and a subscribe. Why not? If you are listening on your podcast, here's my to let you know. I need to let you know that I'm in my home office wearing a black sweatshirt. I do not have my wife's stethoscope around me because I'm in my home office, but I always have to mention her regardless. And wherever you are, don't forget to follow us on Instagram because we're funny and you should watch us. Share this episode with the people that you think might need it. Share it with the people that you love. Let them become the game changers in their life. And of course, if you don't know who I am, welcome. My name is E and I invented the new method where I empower people to finally realize that their symptoms are not in their head. Why? Because you always knew there was a better way. So wherever you are, join the conversation. Let us know that you're here and let's jump in. And of course, I always start with a definition. What do I mean when I say mold related illness or mold toxicity? First of all, I mean, right, illnesses, and I'm going to give you some symptoms in a moment that result from the toxins found in mold. Now, this is not the same as mold allergies. You could be allergic to mold, which means that you could sneeze, have your runny nose, but that's not the same as being sick from the toxins in the mold. Those symptoms are completely different and I'm gonna go over them in a moment. Now, some of you might say, but there's mold everywhere. Mold is found in nature. Are you telling me that everyone is sick? And the answer is yes and no. Here's what I mean. Let's start with a yes. Mold related illness is so prevalent and is so misdiagnosed or not diagnosed. There's so many more people that you can even imagine are actually sick from it. Many of you are listening who are dealing with various aches and pains and weird sensations, fatigue, anxiety, depression. You've maybe been on a journey for a really long time. You might be dealing with mold. So yes, many more people than we're actually managing imagining are actually dealing with mold problems, probably in the millions, but also no. And no, because just because you're exposed to mold doesn't mean you have mold related illness. In fact, most people who are exposed to mold feel just fine. And that's because not everyone has a problem detoxing the mold out of their system. Most people can be exposed to mold and be just fine, which is why it gets really tricky. Let me explain. When most people are around mold, their bodies have a natural defense system. So the immune system recognizes the mold and tries to get rid of it. The lungs create mucus to trap and expel it. The liver and the kidneys do their job and they metabolize and detoxify the mold toxins. And it comes out in urine, feces, sweat. So for most people, being around mold doesn't cause any problems. The body just eliminates it and you don't even know that you're exposed and the body just clears it out. But for some people, and probably many of you listening, and the reason I say that is you're here for a reason. So things don't work so smoothly for many of you. The detoxification process is not as efficient. Your body's ability to detox is not as good. So there's a group of people that the exposure to mold overwhelms the body's detox capacity which leads to the accumulation of mold. Basically, you can't get rid of it, so it starts to accumulate inside. And that 
accumulation makes the body's immune system respond. Like, what is all this stuff that we have here? And that response is what we call mold-related illness. The toxins and the body's response causes chronic inflammation. And you already know what chronic inflammation can do to your body. It starts with symptoms such as fatigue and feeling off. It can go as far as cognitive impairment, respiratory problems, and so many other debilitating illnesses. So you might say, well, how do you know? What makes these people different? Why are some people okay with mold and some people aren't? Why does mold cause havoc for some people? First, there's a few answers for that. For some, it's the amount of time exposed. So maybe you're in the office for a few months, a year, and it doesn't bother you at all. But over time, after years and years of exposure, the body's ability to detox it kind of fails. For others, it may be that they're just more susceptible. Think of the people who are asthmatic or have another autoimmune issue or chronic issue. Their body's already dealing with something and they're less likely to be able to manage one more thing. Their system's busy and to actually detox one more thing is too much for them. And then there's a group of people who are really genetically designed to not detox mold well. And so this is why you can have five people in a family or 10 people in an office, everyone's exposed to mold for the same amount of time, but the person with a particular gene or particular underlying issue will have a hard time detoxing. This makes it even harder for the sick person to be taken seriously because everyone else in the building is fine. And it's so easy to say, why are you having such a hard time? It's got to be in your head because yes, I see the mold here, but everyone else is fine and you're not. So it can't be the mold because everyone else is fine. Or you can have a whole family of people. Everyone's fine except for one of the people in the family. And so then the conclusion is you're crazy. It must be in your head. You're not. Each person's ability to detox this mold is different and unique. Now, that being said, before you go crazy and start searching your house and your entire life for every mold possible, let's qualify this a little bit. Not all mold is bad. We're surrounded by mold. And most of it is fine. It's benign. We're talking about a certain type of mold that releases mycotoxins. There's, there's some common molds found like on foods or certain damp areas of your home, and those are not usually the ones causing the issues. They might cause a mild allergic reaction or respiratory symptoms or runny nose, but those don't produce the high level of mycotoxins, right? Myco means mold and toxin is toxin. So they don't produce the mycotoxins that we're talking about to create these like systemic debilitating symptoms. Now, on the other hand, certain molds, and there's names for it, but people usually know black mold is one of them, but there's others. They produce these mycotoxins, and they're the ones that are toxigenic, toxic for us. When these molds are present in an indoor environment with enough moisture, this is what leads to the health issues. Okay, the next question then is, what are the symptoms? How do I even begin to think about it? Let me give you the list because it's a long list fatigue and weakness. It also can cause GI issues, IBS, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain. It can cause skin issues, rash, hives. It can cause chronic allergies. So when I say chronic allergies, is that is that person who has sinusitis all the time. And that person keeps going for another round of antibiotics and another round of antibiotics, and it gets better for a little bit, and then it comes back, highly suspicious from old headaches, migraine chronic fatigue, exhaustion, brain fog, cognitive dysfunction, memory loss, confusion, joint muscle and stiffness, ringing in the ear or loss of hearing, unusual pains, what, call, what people call ice pick pains, sensitivity to light, sensitivity to touch, people who sometimes you touch your skin, it actually hurts them, numbness and tingling, night sweats, frequent urination, sensitivity, and irregular periods. Now, of course, I always say, you've heard me say this a thousand times, never, ever, ever, ever diagnose yourself. You must always go to your PCP first. Mold should not be your first diagnosis. So if you're feeling these symptoms and you've never been to any doctor or medical provider, don't go to mold first because these symptoms can be a lot of things and some of them are quite dangerous. So go to your PCP, your NP, your PA, you know I love them all. Go to the specialist. 
be worked up for every single thing, do all the scans, do all the blood work. It becomes time to consider mold only when you've already been everywhere and seen by everyone and everyone's kind of saying, mm, there's nothing wrong with you. That is when you start considering mold as a diagnosis. Now, that being said, there are some symptoms from this list that are classic mold, like typical mold. If you hear these, it's a neon sign for mold. And that doesn't mean you can skip the step seeing the doc, like, oh, I have this, therefore I must have mold. But if you have these symptoms, you should run to get tested at the same time as you're doing these other tests, do it ASAP. Now, if you don't have these symptoms, that doesn't mean you don't have mold. I'm just saying these are like classic. And those classic symptoms are the ice pick pain, lightning bolt pain, and they feel like it's a sharp pain. It comes quickly, feels like an ice pick, and then it goes away or unusual area of numbness and tingling that doesn't match up with testing, odd ticks and spasms, pseudo seizures, or disequilibrium or dizziness. So if you're having that high suspicion of mold. So then the next question is, okay, how do I know if I have it? Like, yeah, I have these symptoms. How do I test for it? Is there a test out there? And the answer is, of course, yes. Why would I do it if I can't test it? It's good. Okay, the first step, now, before we even go to the diagnosis, the first step is actually having this conversation is actually the reason for this episode is to bring awareness, right? Because if you're not even considering mold as a diagnosis, then you're never going to get tested, right? Because I cannot tell you how many years I spent as a clinician and it never would have crossed my mind. And so, so many of my patients are challenged by their providers when they bring it up. So having this as a possible diagnosis, being able to communicate this to your provider is the very first step, finding a provider that's willing to have this conversation. And then the way to confirm it, there's actual objective testing, specifically urine testing. I like to use a lab called Real Time Labs. I'm not affiliated with them. I wish I was. I just love working with them. Some states you can order directly on their website. In other states, you need to see a provider to order. So go on the website and take a look. You get a kit in the mail and then you send in your urine and the results come back. It's pretty straightforward, not much to do. If you are planning to do this, a little pro tip. If you're planning to do this test, there's something you need to do before the urine test to make sure that your testing is accurate. Remember, the problem with people with mold illness is that they can't detox their mold which basically means it doesn't come out in large quantities in your urine, but we're testing urine. So we want to make sure that that urine you collect, if you just mold in your body, we want to make sure we capture it. So we want to do what's called a challenge test, meaning we want to try to push as much mold out into the urine if you have it. And the way you do that is you take glutathione twice a day for one week before your mold test. This will help push mold into your urine and if you're positive, you know, we can, we can really see it. And you won't have what's called a false negative, meaning it come out negative, but in reality, you had it all along. Now, when you take the glutathione, you might not feel so great because remember, it's pushing the mold into your system so that you can get it in your urine, which might make your symptoms worse that week. So just plan accordingly. You may not want to do that if there's something really important going on in your life that week. So if your mold test comes back positive, the next step is to try to figure out where your exposure is. And I say try because sometimes the exposure is years ago and you're no longer exposed to it. But we have to make sure that you're not currently living or working somewhere that exposes you to mold because if you're exposed to it daily, you cannot get better. So you need to test your home and your office and anywhere else you spend a lot of time. I use a company called Immunolytics. Again, not affiliated. They send you these Petri dishes that you put in various places around your house, and then you send it off to be tested. And they give you a list of the mold you're exposed to. And if all goes well, the list you get from them matches the list that came from your urine, and you can get a sense of where it's at. So now that we establish it, we have it, we know the source. The next question is, how do I fix it? How do I get better? How, what's going on? So this is like a whole lecture in and of itself, and I'm not going to go into it. I'm going to give you an overview so you can get a general understanding of what has to happen, but it gets really granular. The first step 
is you must remove the mold from your office or your home. You cannot get better if you're still exposed to it. At best, if you start treatment while you're exposed, the most you can hope for is that you won't get worse, right? Because you're going to take the treatment and you're still going to be exposed. So it's going to be like one step forward, one step back, one step forward. You may not get worse, but you definitely won't get better. So the first step is getting rid of the mold. The next step is to get rid of the mold toxins in your body. And at the heart of this is a bunch of supplements. And I won't go into the details of each supplement because it really depends on the type of mold that you have. There's a protocol for each type of mold. But the supplements fall into a few categories. First are some supplements that help support your liver, help your liver detox. Because what's the point? If we can't get it out, we have to help support the liver. So there are several great products. One of them that I like is called Beyond Balance Toxic Ease. And it's great. It's just a blend of herbs and roots. Again, not affiliated. Um, help support your, your liver and because your liver is going to be working really hard. Once you're on that for a few days or longer, depending on your reaction. So let me tell you what I mean. You're going to be on this and some people will be able to handle, you know, if it's 20 drops, you'll be able to handle the 20 drops. But for some people, it just that support already makes them feel worse because now more detox is like more of it's coming in their system. So everyone's different. It's nice if you could do it for a few days and then move on to the next. But for some people, it might need to be on this protocol for a few weeks before their body calms, calms down. So everyone's a little different. Then the next step is called binders. And binders help eliminate the mycotoxin. And they can get very specific to the type of mold you have. But just to give you examples of what we call binders, chlorella, bentonite clay, cholesterol, act activated charcoal. There's all different kinds of binders, but each binder is chosen based on which mold you have. But I just want to let you know what's there. How long will you be on this? I don't know. It completely depends on your body. So it completely depends on your body. Some people can handle full force, high level treatment, and then we can expect to see some results in three to six months. But some people are so unwell that even half a pill makes them worse. And so we have to go really, really slow with them, which means it will take longer. And there's no way to know until we try. For some people who've been sick for a really long time, we might need to add a few more steps like antifungal spray. There are IVs that can help, like Plaquex. And it gets quite intricate, which is why I'm not going to go into detail. But the point is, you can test for it and you can treat it. After three months of treating, you should get tested again warning on this one, usually that first test actually shows more mold than your original test. That doesn't mean you are more exposed. It just means the treatment's working and you're flushing it out. So don't worry, that's a good sign. And you can retest again six months later and hopefully start seeing improvement. You stop treatment when your test shows that you're done. And as I mentioned, how long it takes is really dependent on the patient. Some people can start the whole protocol and go through it. And some people need to go supplement by supplement at a time, a little te half a teaspoon at a time, because otherwise they don't feel well. So just to recap, if you have a lot of unexplained symptoms and you went to your PCP, you saw the specialist that answers, it might be time to consider mold. There's a way to test for it. There's a way to treat it. And most importantly, there's a way to feel validated that you are not crazy. Whether you decide to work with me and my team or another functional medicine provider, I do not recommend that you try to treat yourself on your own. You want to work with someone that's comfortable with this treatment and can navigate the twists and turns that it takes, and it will take some twists and turns. Trust me, it's never straightforward. So wherever you land on this, thank you for listening. And you know why you're listening, because you always knew that there was a better way. Oh. I never even told you how to reach us. If you want to work with us, we're at The New Method everywhere. TheNewMethod.com, The New Method on Instagram, The New Method on Facebook, everywhere except for Twitter because I talk too much. And now I'm going to say thank you for being here because you always knew there was a better way. I'll see you next week.